How bad is it? Good morning. Uh, it's been tough. I've been in the industry 32 years, and this has been the toughest time period. You can see more gray hair since the last time we spoke. But the good news is we're starting to see glimmers of hope, especially in China, uh, South Korea, and also in Australia. And so that's encouraging for us to feel like we're starting to come out of the storm. So you are seeing some green shoots, though, Craig, if I'm not mistaken. I just mentioned China. Tell us a little bit about that story and other places as well where you perhaps are having a little bit of a sigh of relief. Yeah, you know, China, the numbers are starting to pick up. And so last month we finished at around 30 percent occupancy. We've seen good numbers, especially over the May 1st holiday. Um, we've had a lot of travel, uh, places like Hainan, which is kind of the China, the Hawaii of China, so to speak. We had hotels running the 70 percent occupancies. Chengdu ran about 90 percent occupancy. And the, the trends really are around leisure travel first. Business travel is starting to open up now, and I think uh, group travel will be the last to come out of the, the pocket. And it's mostly the millennials that are out and about earlier on and booking through our digital channels. All right, Craig, sorry, I just had a bit of confusion here. Um, Craig, so, you know, what are the plans then that you have in place for, let's start with Asia Pacific, uh, in terms of building out new properties and the like? Uh, are those uh, plans on ice for the time being? No, you know, Rish, it's, it's been very surprising as, as the hotels have gone down in occupancy. Uh, we thought we'd see the same reaction with uh, future development. And our development team actually is ahead of last year's booking pace. And so they have signed more deal, deals year to date. We'll still open about 80% of the hotels that were planned on opening this year. None of them fallen through. Some of them have been delayed because we haven't been able to get construction workers out to the sites. But the fact that development deals are still being signed across Asia has been encouraging and leads us to think that investors still believe that the viability of our industry over the long term in Asia Pacific is still very positive. Craig, Selena here in Beijing. How have you seen the pandemic change user behavior in China for the long run? And how are you using that as an opportunity to reboot the hospitality industry? So that's a great question. I mean, we, we have a saying now that safety and hygiene is the new amenity. And what we're seeing is that people still want to travel. And we've, we've, we've seen people booking. We, we've sold uh, advanced uh, gift cards lately. So there's a desire to go back to travel, but people want to do it in a more safe manner. And so let's start with a check-in process. We have an app where people are checking in and there's, there's more propensity now to use that app rather than go to the front desk and have used their mobile key to check into the room. We're also seeing the fact that people go to our restaurants. We stop, we take their temperature. In the case of China, we ask them for the QR code to make sure that they're from a safe part of the city or a safe province. And they don't have a problem with that. In the old days, if you'd asked to take a temperature, I think people would have been insulted. If they go in, we have buffet lines are still popular, but we have crowd control and people are required to wear a mask when they're in the restaurant except for when they're eating. And I think, in, and for the most part, people are happy to see that. They feel more secure. And so cleanliness is really going to be a, a much higher standards as people want. They want to travel, but they want to feel more secure while they're traveling. And Craig, how are you assessing the risks from geopolitical tensions, the trade war, as well as continual supply chains moving out of China after the pandemic subsides in terms of potentially there could be a big drop in, in business travel between China and the U.S. and other countries? We haven't seen as much of a, a, a drop in, in travel due to the trade war. And one of the reasons why is that most of our business in China is actually domestic business. And, that, and so we have, we've been showing up our domestic business over the last couple of years in China. We, we have almost 400 hotels there. And so it's traveling between Shanghai and Beijing, Chengdu, Chongqing. And what we have seen, though, is that domestic travel is, is continues to, to grow, especially in a time like this. And people are, will not be traveling for a little while border to border as there are restrictions between them. People can't, if you come to Hong Kong, for example, you're, you're under quarantine for two weeks. And so we think that going forward, the countries that are going to come out of this faster in the hospitality industry are gonna be the ones that have stronger domestic travel. And it'll take a little while longer for those who are dependent, say, on long haul international business. And when it comes to that domestic travel in China, just how long lasting do you expect this surge in travel to be in China, given that many people in the country have been unemployed, they have less discretionary spending. So how are you seeing that uptick lasting throughout the rest of this year? 
I, 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 it'll come back slowly. I mean, obviously, we're not at 2019 rates, and we think it'll take us a while to get back to the, those levels of occupancy. But there still is a desire to get out. I mean, it was interesting over the May 1st holiday, people traveling to Chengdu because they wanted to, to go out and see nature or see the pandas. I, I think that it, it'll it'll come back, and it, people will be a little more choosy about where they stay. They'll be looking for deals maybe in, in the beginning more than before. But what the, some of the trends that we're seeing is a lot more being done over digital. And so people are booking over digital. Uh, they're using digital when they're in the hotels. I, I, we're pretty positive about the, it coming back, but we're more than anything we're seeing it's happening with the millennials, the younger crowd. I think the baby boomers will be the last to kind of come out of their homes and, and take the long vacations or business trips. Craig, how's, uh, uh, how are other parts of the world in your remit doing as well? I'm talking chiefly Europe. Um, Europe's uh, still slow, I and mean, it's, it's a matter of uh, countries opening up one by one, and they're seeing the same thing that we are. It's interesting. We have a, uh, two calls a week with our CEO, and we trade information back and forth between the different regions of the world, and I think everybody's watching what's happening here to predict what will happen in the United States and also in Europe. And so there'll be a great dependence on domestic travel in Europe. Where you're, in the past, uh, Europe has really been a, a country where people crowd, travel across borders to do work. And so I think Europe will come back a little slower than than probably the United uh, than Asia Pacific. We're still we still think Asia Pacific will come out of this, especially East Asia, faster than the rest of the world. Craig, very quickly, just uh, tell me a little bit about how uh, loyalty your loyalty program is going now, and whether you're going to sweeten that a little bit to entice people back post COVID nineteen. We will, and I hope you're a part of the loyalty program, Rish. That I'm just making sure that you're there with us. We have sweetened the deal. We have, we have made sure that our, the people that can't travel this year don't lose their status. And so if you were a platinum last year and you're unable to use your, or use your trips this year and earn miles, you will still stay a platinum into the next year. And so that's the first thing we did, which is very important to our clients. The, the mobile app and through our loyalty program is still one of the best ways that, that we can communicate with our clients and it's the way that they continue to communicate with us whether they're buying um, travel ahead of time, whether they're buying gift certificates um, and so we've made sure that we, we've stayed as loyal to our customers as they were to us over the past and I think we've made some concessions to do so whether it's about booking redemptions, if you had a redemption that was going to expire say in July this year we've extended that also so that you can use that trip uh, say next year.